Bhagavad Gita, text 3.24 If I did not act properly, the world would perish, and I would be the cause of social chaos, thereby ruining the population. This is not Raja Krishna speaking here. Although he can do no wrong, Krishna certainly appears to set a poor example in his affairs with the gopis. Thus, after hearing of Raja Krishna's Rasa dance with others' wives, Maharaj Parikshit asked Shukadeva how the very support of Dharma, Krishna himself, could act out of character. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.33.26-28 apparently contradicting what he says in this verse. Shukadeva answered by explaining that great persons, Ishwaraha, can do what others cannot. They act without selfish motive and are thus not implicated in karmic reaction by their seemingly material activities. Furthermore, from an ontological point of view, Krishna was the husband, maintainer of the husbands of the gopis, for he resides in the hearts of all. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.33.35 Everyone belongs to Krishna, but not everyone acknowledges this. The gopis of Krishna Leela exemplify for us the acknowledgement of this principle to the extreme. We are to learn from them the ideal life of devotion to God that Bhagavad Gita points to in its concluding words. The gopis were Krishna's most surrendered devotees and his union with them while appearing inappropriate on the surface, was in fact most appropriate. Krishna is easier to understand as the prince and statesman of the Bhagavad Gita than he is in his leela of divine love with the gopis. However, readers should understand that Krishna's noble and majestic character, Aishwarya, brought out in this verse, is not absent in his Raja Leela. It lies beneath the surface of that Leela and is foundational to it. For were Raja Krishna not God himself, the very support of Dharma, his Leela with the Gobis would hold little charm for us. It is only because he is God that his most human-like Leela is so sweet, Madhurya. This point is central to Gaudiya Vedanta. For the pleasure of his devotees like the gopis, Krishna may violate the scripture, otherwise not. To please Krishna's devotees, it is the essence of scriptural adherence. Scripture tells us that the criterion for evaluating the perfection of action is the extent to which it pleases God. Sam Siddhir Hari Toshanam Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.13 And there is nothing that pleases Krishna more than the pleasure of his devotees. However, under scrutiny, Krishna does not violate scripture, nor would this be pleasing to his devotees. Arjuna's concern for keeping the social order intact, which was voiced in chapter 1, is addressed here by Krishna. He says that he acts with this in mind. Previous commentators have given this verse a narrow interpretation. Krishna's concern for the social order means the conversation of caste 
within the traditional Varn Ashram socio-religious system. See Bhagavad Gita 4.13. Ironically, concern for an improved social order today involves a breaking down of what are considered artificial boundaries, such as race, sex, religion, and so on. An improved world order is though to be one in which people relate to one another based on what they have in common as human beings, a vision that transcends material differences. This is the spirit of the essential message of the Gita as well, wherein the common tie between all humanity, even all species, is their common spiritual essence. It is in pursuit of realizing this common ground that the Gita stresses adherence to its social order. But since the likelihood of re-establishing this socio-religious system in the modern world is slight, it may be best to stress the essential message of the Gita, which is to elevate the understanding of humanity's common bound from one that is species-centered to one that is based in spirituality. In doing so, the spirit behind the Gita's concern for preserving the social order can also be stressed by emphasizing the importance of social morality in general and avoiding the watering down of values, understanding these concerns as the religious and moral underpinnings of a spiritual reality. Most of the world's religions contain a kind of social-oriented teaching that validates social activism. These teachings are rarely seen as the means to enlightenment itself, but are certainly not seen as being opposed to it. Devotees who, like Arjuna, are not ready to take up a life of renunciation can perhaps find in these teachings models of a contemporary social framework in support of enlightened life. Vaishnavas share many of the values inherent in the environmental movement, vegetarian and animal protection movements. Certain aspects of liberal social thought and various other related types of activism. And there is no reason why karma yoga to promote these values would militate against a Vaishnava's gradual advancement. Indeed, since Krishna himself speaks in favor of these values, working to promote them could be considered pleasing to God in the most general sense, as is adherence to the prescribed duties of Varn Ashram Dharma. Selflessness, renunciation of the fruits of one's work, knowledge of an underlying spiritual purpose of all things, and the desire to please God are the basic principles that, when combined, with a culture of devotion to God, lead one gradually to the supreme destination.